Okay, this video is going to talk about functions as transformations. It assumes you've had some backgrounds in transformations. Um, the main crux of the video is going to be writing equations when given the graph of the function already. So you have to observe what transformation has been done to a particular parent function and then synthesize uh, its equation. One of the biggest specific uh, problems with that when we go to do this is finding the coefficient of a and how a uh, manipulates the output of a function. So I'm going to write here a times f at x. Okay. So we're going to take a look at that. We also know that h comma k is the vertex of the function. Okay, and this video also assumes that you're pretty comfortable with that notion, um, and we're going to put more focus around how to find uh, a, coefficient of a, when looking at a graph. Looking at the vertex is pretty easy. It's the, just the translated origin. Uh, and then when we go to write the, uh, the function, we just need to realize, we we'll put a little star here under the h, that the h value is usually the opposite of what we see because it affects the input, therefore it has the inverse effect. And you should have studied that somewhat in a class, uh, you know, before you dive into this video and accept it as true. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of these functions to start, okay, and see if we can find a commonality. So I'm going to show you the absolute value function. That's the main absolute value parent function, as well as the quadratic function and the square root function and the cubic function and they're all of the form uh, a f at x minus h uh, plus k okay with their respective uh, uh, parent functions integrated in them here as you look at them okay so what we notice in this is that every graph has two points in common they all have 0, 0 in common. And they all have 1, 1 in common. Okay. Now, being that we are looking at the multiplicative factor of A, looking at this point 0, 0 isn't really that helpful because when we talk about multiplying in a transformation, when we multiply the output, we're multiplying this 0, which is the output, and Nothing happens when we do that because when we multiply by zero, we get zero. So our interest is going to be in this point one comma one here because when we multiply the output by a, what we're in fact going to get is a. So how does that translate in terms of the graph? Well, let me turn the slider controls on here. And let's see what we get. Keep your eyes on this point of 1 comma 1. What happens when I make a 3? Well, this point of interest comes from up from 1 and is now at 3. It goes from 1, 1 to 1, 3. Okay, well it's interesting because 3 is my value of a. And what then happens when I make a negative 2? Let me make a negative 4, actually, so it won't be in the way of what I just drew. Well, you see here that this point of interest is now moved here because we've multiplied all the outputs by negative 4. And now the point is 1, comma, negative 4. Well, we see that negative 4 happens to be the value of a. So hopefully the relationship you're going to see here is that any time you have a translated parent function that has a manipulated output by way of multiplication by a, if you in fact just go one grid to the right of the vertex, unless the function's been reflected over the y-axis. You could just go 
down to that translated point and read the output value. And you will know that A is equal to that value. Because it was originally an output of 1 that got multiplied by A to, in fact, B, whatever A is. So here it was A equals negative 4. Again, if I move it over to A equals 2, you're going to see that one grid over from the vertex. This adjusted height now is 2. So A equals 2. Okay, let's try and put that into motion with what we know about a couple of other functions. Uh, I'm sorry, what we know about uh, having the vertex being h comma k and see if we can just put it all together and write the equation uh, of a given function. So let's go over here to the example of this absolute value function that I have. Okay, so what do we need to notice here? Well, we need to notice a couple things. One is it's the absolute value function. That's the parent function. H comma K is the vertex, which is going to be this point right here, is equal to negative 4 comma negative 2. And again, I put a little star under the negative 4 to remind me that when I write the equation, I'm actually going to write the opposite of that, or more importantly, the inverse of that. Okay, and now let's put this little find A idea to the test. So what do we have here? From the vertex, I'm going to go one grid to the right. And I'm going to go up and hit the graph. One, two, three grids. Well, this point was translated from right here when it was one. But now it is three because it has a height of three. So A equals three. Now when we go to write that, we're going to get that f at x equals 3 times the quantity of absolute value, x, minus h, which in this case is minus a negative, so I'm going to get plus 4, plus k, which is plus a negative, so I'm going to get minus 2. And if I use this sketchpad applet that I designed here and show you the equation information, you in fact see that this is what I have here. The computer is actually generating this graph from. If you notice here, it says minus negative, which we know to be this plus, and it says plus negative, which we know to be this minus. But everything else is pretty well copacetic. So let's take a look now at another example involving a quadratic. Okay. So what we have here is we need to notice right away this is the quadratic family. So the parent graph will be x squared. Okay. And then we notice that the vertex, h comma k, is going to be equal to 4 comma 1, with a little star under the 4 to remind me to use the inverse of 4 when I write the equation. And then, let's take a look, we're going to go one grid to the right, and then up and hit the graph, and see that this height is a height of 2. So, A equals 2. So from there we could write the equation of this function, f at x equals a, which is 2, times the quantity, x minus 4 for the h value, using the inverse of that, squared plus 1. Again, when you have vertical shift here, which is given by k equals 1, it's not the inverse of it, it's just in fact 1. So that should match up with the sketchpad equation, and it in fact does quite nicely. Okay, so from there, 
Let's take a look at a square root example. Okay, here we are going to see that we have, to start, we've got the square root function is our parent function. And I think we should see that this has not been translated left or right. Uh, it's just been translated up. It looks like it's been flipped over. If you notice these parent points here, the original y equals root x function, and they've obviously been flipped over. So we should expect a negative value for a because we've gotten this reflection over the over the x-axis. Okay. So let's take a look at the vertex. The vertex is h comma k equals zero comma two, and we will go to find a as we've been saying this general rule of going one grid off the vertex, in this case to the right again, like it's been for the last couple. Now we're going to go down to hit the graph. One, two, three. So a equals negative three. And then what we get from that is f at x equals negative 3 times the square root of x with no adjustment to the input because h is 0 plus 2. And then when I show the equation information, you're going to see that that is very much what we get. The computer does this minus zero part, which isn't exactly simplified. The more formal answer is here, what I'm circling. So hopefully this video is giving you a decent demonstration of how to read the value of A from a graph uh, in terms of A being the multiplier of the output, the coefficient of the, uh, of the uh, parent function, and hopefully your natural sense of H and K uh, being the vertex um, helps you synthesize these equations. So hopefully this has made some sense. Again, like I said, it assumes that you've had some background uh, in transformations. Uh, this is kind of the backwards uh, transformation of taking the graph and saying the equation. You should have had some experience of, given, of being given an equation and writing its graph.